Well, we could have stopped after the first one, if you just listen to me. I was ready to take it. I was set to give them a security check right there on the spot. I know, but it was just too big and too expensive. What do we need with all that room, hot and cold, running doormat and, and a big fountain in the circular fire, uh, fireplace? I don't know. We don't need any of that. It's called luxury, my girl, and I hope to make it the style to which you will become accustomed. Well, it's foolish. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It isn't. Brad, how can we have an argument when you're kissing me? We can't. That's the point. See, I told you I'd win. You have not won. I'm going to insist that we be practical and sensible. Oh, come on, Jenny. You've been practical and sensible all your life. It's time to break out of it a little bit. Oh, well, I have broken out. I mean, I've decided to marry you, haven't I? That's not exactly practical. <laughs> Uh, 
watch yourself, Peter. Right. You look like you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, I am. Good for the formality around here. Good for the little wearing. I wasn't talking about the party. I was talking about Becky. Becky's a very lovely girl, Edwina. You should get to know her. Yes. It seems to me that you found yourself a real diamond in the rough. That sounds like a left-handed compliment, is it? No, not at all. I was being serious. You've got to realize, Richard, that I've only seen Becky when she's wearing that wig. I had n never dreamed that she could be so pretty. Yeah, she's pretty, all right. I even go so far as to say that with a little help, touches here and there, she could be almost beautiful. Are you going to join me in this Pygmalion project, Edwina? You can be Colonel Pickering to my Henry Higgins. <laughs> Why not? That sounds like fun. Edwina, excuse me, could you come over here for a moment? Sir. Hey, what happened to Peter? You get lost in the garden? He had to call some hospital. Pretty, ain't she? Hey, you mean Edwina? Uh, you get it. Hey, well, don't you worry about it, because you're doing everything right. Maybe it's because I'm with you. I think she likes you a lot. Oh, come on, Becky, huh? The only thing that Edwina's interested in when it comes to me is doing everything better than I do it. I think you're wrong. I think she likes you a whole lot. I can tell by the way she keeps looking at you. I can just feel it. I I've always felt things about people, Richard. I'm never wrong. Well, Clint Buckley. Yeah, well, so much for your intuitions about Edwina Lewis. Can we go now? Boy, are you tired? Tired of all these people. I feel like I'm on good behavior or something. Yeah, I agree. Well, look, we'll bid farewell to our hostess and then we'll split. Come on. Oh, you two having a good time? Oh, yeah, we sure are. We've got to be going, Dorian. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I haven't even had a chance to talk to you yet. I understand that you are single. Yes, ma'am. I'll say over at the Blue Ridge Club Friday night. Oh, well, I would love to hear you. As a matter of fact, what I really should do is to send over someone from the banner who could uh, write a story about you. Really? You do that? Well, of course. I mean, you're an employee of the Lord Preston. We should look after our own, shouldn't we? I appreciate that. Thank you, Miss Lord. Yeah, that's really great, Dorian. We've got to go. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Have a good night. I think that you are perhaps overly optimistic about your chances with Richard. When he talks to Becky, he gets a certain look in his eye. Don't worry about it. Believe me. All right. Would you like to make a little bet on this? Just to keep it interesting. No. I won't bet with you because I never gamble. Which happens to be one reason why I always win. I'm sorry, Anna, for the interruption. Now, what were you saying? Oh, just that Karen's going to give me the name of the great discount store for dresses. Oh, I should be home. I'm starting to get nervous about all the things to do before the wedding. That's right, it's in two days. Yeah, I hope Brad went to the stores today. And I should call the bakery first thing tomorrow and make sure they remember the cake. Now, that's all we need, a bride and groom and no cake. Kathy, what's the matter? You haven't smiled once when we talked about the wedding. Oh, Anna, I don't know. I guess I have my doubts about it. You mean whether Brad can make Jenny happy? Yes, that, among other things. Honey, we've all shared in those doubts. But you don't have them any longer. Not so much. But sure, they are very different people, but opposites can attract. Tell me something. Do you think Brad really has the tools? Jenny thinks so, and that's what's important. She's no dummy. He's been after her for such a long time. I'm sure she wouldn't have said yes unless she was sure. And I must say, having spent time around the two of them, Brad can be pretty good for Jenny. Do you think so? Yes, he makes her laugh a lot. They have fun. And Jenny is so serious, I think that's important. And Brad is mad about her, there's no question about that, so 
I'm pretty confident that they can be happy together. Okay, tell me. Tell you, tell you what? Well, you're obviously thinking about something and not saying it. Is it Brad? Do you know something I don't know? Excuse me, Anna. I'm not expecting anyone. No, I haven't had the pleasure. Hi, I'm Marco Dane. How do you do? How do you do? Well, this is a nice surprise. What are you two up to? Well, I got off work early, so uh, we came over thinking we'd drag you out for late pizza. Pizza? Oh, 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 oh thank you. Uh, late pizzas don't agree with me early in the morning. Besides, I've already eaten. But can I offer you something? A cup of coffee? I would like a drink. Hey, I will have a drink, too. Good idea. <laughs> would you like something, Anna? Oh, thank you. Uh, I really must get home. I'd love to stay and join you, but I have to get things ready for the wedding. See you then. Good night, Anna. Good night. Bye, Karen. 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 Bye,
down if you found the sales slip, so you could tell me where the discount house yes, is. Yes, indeed I did, and I wrote down the address for you and everything. Oh, thank you. Bronson? Mm -hmm. Well, that's not on Smithville Road or Billings Avenue. No, I, uh, I got a little confused. I, I don't have a very good sense of direction. Yeah, you see, Karen's philosophy is you've seen one street, you've seen them all. Good, Michael. Uh, anyway, I, I hope you find what you're looking for, and, and just remember, some days they have great bargains, and other days they don't. Well, I hope I'm as lucky shopping there as you were. Thank you, Karen. Welcome. Nice to see you again, Martha. Nice seeing you again, too, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, what was all that about? I know you're up to something. Why are you always so suspicious, Marco? I'm not up to anything. Hey, look, you've never been to that place in your life. I was just sitting here, remember? I saw you write that down. Now tell your Uncle Marco what it is you've got cooking now. Uncle Marco, forget it. It's just a little white line. It doesn't mean anything. Karen, dear, when are you going to learn that telling the truth is much safer than telling these little white lies? Uncle Marco, spare me the morality lecture, please. I've known you to tell a lie or two in your own time. I... Uh, those were the good old days when we told them to together. together. <laughs> yeah, we told a lot of them. Some of them were fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun when we were on the coast before. Wait a second, I changed my mind. I like you better as a liar. Why? Because I don't go to jail when you lie. I only go when you tell the truth. Oh, that. Yes, that. <laughs> you know, sometimes I forget that ever happened. Easy for you to forget. You got off on probation. I'm the one who rotted behind bars for six months. Oh, Anna, you hung over. No. Marco took me right home after we left here last night. Didn't get that much sleep. Kathy, let me ask you a question. I think I figured out the perfect solution for everything last night. Oh, what? What would you think if I married Marco? Marry Marco? Are you serious? Well, yeah, why not? All right, no, I'm not serious. I want to be. Oh, Lana. All right, Kathy, all right. I said it wasn't serious. But I'm desperate. Desperate enough for the last night. It seems like a very good idea. Child. Probably have a kid hustling on a street corner by the time that was four years old. That's reality, Kathy. And I don't want to deal with reality. I am sick of 